castellated and cellular beams are custom designed for a specific location on a specific project. The process by which castellated and cellular beams are fabricated is similar but not identical. Castellated beams are fabricated by using a computer-operated cutting torch to cut a zigzag pattern along the web of a wide flange section. Once the section has been cut in the appropriate pattern, the two halves are offset. The waste at the ends of the beam is removed, and the two sections are welded back together to form the castellated section. A full or partial penetration butt weld is then typically made from one side of the web without prior beveling of the edges if the web thickness is relatively small. Cellular beams are fabricated in a similar manner using a nested semicircular cutting pattern. In order to achieve the repeating circular pattern, two cutting passes are required. The two cutting passes increase the handling of the steel during the manufacturing process. Consequently, the time and waste in producing a cellular beam is slightly greater than that of a castellated beam. Once the two cuts have been made, the two halves that have been created are offset and welded back together to form a cellular beam. Typical naming for a steel section indicates the shape type, the approximate depth, and the appropriate weight of the shape per linear foot. For example, a W8 by 10 represents a wide flange section with a depth of approximately 8 inches and a nominal weight of 10 pounds per foot. A similar naming is used for castellated and cellular beams. Castellated beams are represented by CB, while cellular beams are noted as LB. The number representations are identical to those of standard steel sections. For example, a castellated and cellular beam constructed from a W8 by 10 root beam is called out as a CB12 by 10 and LB12 by 10 respectively. As the depth is approximately one and a half times that of the root beam and the weight is the same as the root beam. Under certain conditions it is beneficial to produce an asymmetric section. In this case the naming of these sections is based on the two different root beams used to make the castellated or cellular section. For example, if the root beam for the top T of the castellated or cellular beam is a W21 by 44 and the root beam for the bottom is a W24 by 55, then the castellated beam would be CB30 by 44 slash 55. The first number presents the approximate depth and the second pair of numbers provides the nominal weight of the root beam used for the top of the section followed by a forward slash and the nominal weight of the root beam used for the bottom of the section. The weight per foot of the resulting asymmetric beam, of course, is the average of the two numbers. In comparison to their root beams, castellated and cellular beams offer many design and construction advantages. As a result of expanding the web and introducing web openings, these members have an increased depth to weight ratio an increased section modulus S sub X and increased strong axis moment of inertia I sub X. These increases not only make longer spans possible, but their increased efficiency also provides the potential for significant cost savings when used in long spans. However, these advantages do come with their limitations. The primary use for castellated and cellular beams is in spanning long distances utilizing a lighter weight section. In general, they are practical for spans greater than 30 feet and prove to be a very economical alternative for spans greater than 40 feet. Castellated and cellular beams are ideal for structures with long open space requirements, such as parking garages, industrial and warehouse facilities, office buildings, schools, and hospitals. One of the greatest advantages of castellated and cellular beams is the ability to run utilities directly through the web openings. 
the openings in the beams may be utilized for the installation of conduit, HVAC, and sprinkler piping, and any other utility system. Use of castellated and cellular beams in office buildings provides the owners and future tenants the flexibility to install additional wiring for telephones, computers, or other office equipment. The integration of conduits within the beam depth is also advantageous in medical buildings, where gas lines, data lines, and other services are often installed or relocated after the building construction is complete. When all utilities are housed within the depth of the beam, the ceiling can be directly fixed to the structure. Castellated and cellular beams are approximately 1.5 times deeper than the equivalent weight wide flange beams. Consequently, castellated and cellular beams have excellent vibration resistance in comparison to their root beams. Increasing stiffness will decrease the effects of vibration on a floor or roof system. The manufacturing process used to fabricate castellated and cellular beams involves cutting the root beam into two sections. Provided that the opening space is identical, the halves of two root beams can be welded together to create an asymmetric shape. This is specially advantageous for composite applications, where the top T works in conjunction with the concrete slab. For composite design, it is typically cost-effective to specify an asymmetric section, using a smaller root beam for the top T and a larger one for the bottom T. There are geometrical limits on web opening size and spacing. These limits can be used to select a preliminary web opening size and spacing. The opening size and spacing will define the geometry of the web post, the web material between two openings, and the depth of the beam. Any opening size or spacing that meets these guidelines is acceptable for applying the strength calculations that we will introduce in the next video. Due to the fabrication process of staggering the halves and aligning web posts, the opening size and spacing chosen must be consistent throughout the length of the beam. The types of end connections used for castellated and cellular beams are no different than those used for wide flange beams. Typical connections used are shear taps, double angles, and single angles. It is standard practice to adjust the opening pattern when possible to allow for full web post width at the end of each beam. In cases where this cannot be achieved, a partial or complete opening fill will be shop installed by the castellated beam supplier to allow the end connection to be made. During the design process, opening spacing should be optimized to avoid infills when possible to minimize the cost of the added material and labor. At the location of the opening nearest the end connection is an area of special consideration for castellated and cellular beams. The minimum diagonal spacing from the corner of the cope to the side of the first opening is designated as E prime. In a typical instant when large copes are required in the beam, the dimension E prime can become quite small. It is recommended for beams with E prime values 40% or less than the diagonal distance from the corner of the beam in an uncoped state to the side of the first opening that partial infills be used. Since the whole spacing and end conditions can be controlled in design, this E prime consideration does not typically control the design. During the transportation of castellated and cellular beams, prefabricated lengths have to be taken into consideration to fit in the delivery trucks or containers. During lifting and handling procedures, laterally unbraced castellated and cellular beams may exhibit instability under the relative light loading of structure self-weight combined with the weight of an erector. Caution must be exercised during the installation process. Therefore, it is recommended that erection bracing be used for the installation of cellular and castellated beams. The bracing requirements vary depending on span and depth and are typically determined by the beam manufacturer. 
The coating systems used to protect castellated and cellular beams are no different than those used to protect conventional structural steel. The system used should be determined based on the type of exposure the steel will be subject to and the desired maintenance schedule. However, in the case of parking structures or any other structure exposed to weather, it is recommended that an epoxy-based paint system be applied or the steel should be hot dip galvanized. For hot dip galvanized structures, the sharp corners around the openings in the castellated shapes could be notch risers and initiate cracking. Cellular profiles with their smooth transitions are therefore preferred in galvanized applications. In the next video, we will go through the details of analysis and design of castellated and cellular beams. Don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you for watching.